future Jessica here because I forgot to start this off with, on a positive note. But before we get into the mess, let's talk about some happy news that Kerry Washington is set to produce the movie adaptation with Disney of From the Desk of Zoe Washington. And if you have not read this book, it is a middle grade book. Our main character, Zoe Washington, wants to become a baker love it um she doesn't know her biological father he has been in jail the majority of her life and she basically sneaks um the mail to get a letter to see if he had been writing and she finds a letter um that her mom had been hiding from her all these times and then she starts writing to him and it is such a sweet book it also has some touches on some serious topics and you know i have love anything that deals with baking and now it is going to be adapt adapted and carrie washington is producing it for disney so like i'm excited but let's get to the tea Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess, this is, this is Nigel, and <laughs> this is Nigel. And welcome to another episode of Book Community where I try to keep you abreast of the goings on in the bookish community. Do you like your shirt? Do you like your shirt? He's like the real deal is better, duh Nigel, but I gotta do what I can, you know? Gotta give the people what they want. They wanna be able to have you on their shirt too. But first, we have a bit of ASMR. Did y'all like that or did you hate it? Anyway, this video is brought to you by... <gasps> we have to thank today's sponsor, which is Boxu. Boxu is a subscription company with premium Japanese snacks shipped to you directly from Japan. And all of them come with this little booklet that goes through all the snacks, what ingredients are in them, um, what part of Japan they are sourced from, which I think is really cool. And of course, so it'll tell you if it's sweet, if it's savory, if it has nuts in it. Um, and then you can kind of take your culinary tour through Japan from the comfort of your own home. Oh my, oh, look, there's little, oh my God, how cute. It's like little pancakes. Every box has a different theme. So it doesn't get boring because you get different snacks, again, from different areas of Japan and different snacks to fit the theme. So this first snack that I'm gonna try is Doro Choco and it is from Tokyo. It looks like this, the little chocolate sandwiches. I, oh, they look so cute, look. Mm-hmm, yes. Mm-hmm, oh yeah. It is a subscription box, but you can cancel your subscription at any time. So you can use my code and link to get 10% off your own authentic Japanese snack box subscription from Boxu. My code is Jess010, so that's Jess010. Don't miss out on this delicious snack journey through Japan. But thank you to Boxu for sponsoring this video, but let's get in to the tea. Okay, so first we're starting with, ow, I bit my tongue. Okay. We're starting with author Ijoma Oluo, who wrote, so you wanna talk about race and mediocre. I have not read the first one, but I have read mediocre and it was excellent. I recommend it to everyone. And then also there was a page on Instagram that was called, so you wanna talk about, but it didn't include the title race. And I, along with many people, shared a lot of posts from this account. I'm sure you've seen it. If you don't know the account I'm talking about because the account has a, a different name now, but they shared posts about different things regarding the election and voting and racism, just all of these topics. And it's basically like, so you wanna talk about, here's the topic. And there would be slides with a bunch of bullet points with information and then resources where they got that information where you could look further. And I, along with other people, I'm sure this, let me see, this account has 2.8 million followers, shared a lot of the information because it was a way, like a snapshot 
to get information shared quickly and there were a lot of people sharing the page but then someone sent me a video from the author and so she had been aware of this page and a lot of people assumed it was her or affiliated with her since her book is called so you want to talk about race and the page is called so you want to talk about but she's like that's not me i don't have any affiliation with the page and so she messaged whoever was running the page to say like hey who are you like what's going on and didn't really get an answer and so from that she was like i knew it was a white person because of of them avoiding the question and so she tried to ignore it and then it kept going and she kept seeing more people share I mean it's a big account celebrities share you know all kinds of people and so I guess she messaged them again and found out it is a white woman who runs the account her name is Jess like how dare she and the account started out as like a pro Bernie account which is funny if you read mediocre and then it has morphed into this page and so i think after the first time that ijoma messaged her she put just a little thing in the bio that said not affiliated with this author which i mean everyone doesn't read it an instagram bio and so not something super easy to see but then you know the page kept growing people kept sharing it and apparently she's gotten a book deal out of it now i don't know if the book is also supposed to be called so you want to talk about because it literally <laughs> would be so close to so you want to talk about race but jess has gotten a book deal out of it so ijoma posted a video on instagram i think like an igtv I'm just going over that because she's like basically this person is you know profiting and and gaining uh what's the word gaining i don't even know fame gaining something i'll have to look up the word based on my work and works of others because it was basically putting together information from other people who had created or studied or reported on this information and just making it easily digestible for millions of people on Instagram, including myself, and then saying, you know, the book deal for something like this, when it necessarily wasn't even her work. And there are other people, especially people and women of color who are doing that work that she's essentially capitalizing off of and now gets a book deal when those other people aren't. So the page has changed the name. Now it's called So Informed. And she did put up a post say po introducing herself as the person behind the page because she had not done that beforehand. And the post is I apologize for the harm I've caused to Ijoma Oluo out of respect for Ijoma Oluo. I will rename this page. This will be the last post on this page with the handle. So you want to talk about I will change the name shortly. To those who voice concerns about the book's publication, thank you. I am pausing its publication. I hear your feedback and am absorbing it as I reconsider my role and responsibilities in this situation. I recognize that once again, people of color have had to carry the burden of education and I regret that my actions have increased that burden. I want to publicly acknowledge the BIPOC, LGBTQIA+, and disability experts who have contributed their work, experiences, and voices to this page and who have been so instrumental in making this page what it is. This page is about truth and dialogue. This conversation will be ongoing. Thank you for holding me accountable. I'm committed to moving forward in the following ways, changing the name of this page, making collaborations on the page more transparent. Contributors will receive sole credit for their posts as well as adding a photo bio to the post should they be comfortable with that. Creating a safer space for bi POC LGBTQIA plus and people with disabilities to voice their concerns. This will be a space to allow this community to raise concerns and to flag harm. Messages on this app are often missed, as there are many, by creating a separate space that will be monitored, it will allow concerns to be seen and addressed. Working towards creating a model slash structure in which I will be able to compensate those who produce work on slash for this page. These are the first steps. There is still much work to be done. And I think there was another post because um, she did get some backlash for one of the posts she did and she did mention i've never taken money for the work that i do on this page and she said when i had seventy thousand followers a literary agent reached out to me and told me they thought my page specifically the way in which i break topics down and present them visually could be an interesting idea for a book several months later i signed a deal to write a book it is this page come to life it is mostly political while discussing social issues that are intertwined politically I worked on and wrote this book alone and it is not an anti-racism book as people are saying it is. Neither does it contain the work of any of the collaborators I have worked with on this page. 
There is false information currently being spread by people who A, have not even read the book and B, have never spoken to me before in their lives, stating that the contents of the book are what can be found on the page here. This is simply untrue. The book is original material. She also said, I've also always run this page alone and have worked with many amazing collaborators on post. This page is not an anti-racism page and I am not an anti-racism educator. It has never been stated otherwise. And then she introduces herself as Jess and said that she had no real desire to be a forward facing public figure at all, um, dealing with the fact that she lives with anxiety. And so that was shared right before she shared her post about apologizing to Ijoma Oluo. So, I mean, it seems like the first time she was contacted, she should have made these steps, but she didn't. And she has now made those steps like changing the page name and is outlining all of these things that she said she's going to do, pausing the publication on the book. And you know, hopefully she's learned from this experience and um, will give credit where credit is due and not try to capitalize off of other people's work. And hopefully the book is all original material and it is not really someone else's work, you know, repackaged essentially. But I just thought that was interesting because I myself had shared a lot of posts from that page. And if you followed it and wondered maybe where it went, she didn't notice the name change or wonder why they changed the name or if you thought that was related to um the book so you want to talk about race it is not and now you know okay so got some romance centered topics but they're very important so first i would like to say though that if there is tea that's popping and romance landia and i don't cover it here you can always go to Izzy's channel, which is happy for now. She does a Romance Landia monthly. So just once a month where she wraps up, you know, the tea, the hot goss that has been popping in the romance community. Because I don't see everything um, like I've said before. So always check Izzy out for that and her other wonderful content. If you are not following her, of course, her channel will be linked down below. But this is about an anthology that was supposed to come out. So there's a black trans author, RM Virtues, who came up with the idea for a monster anthology and they were going to publish it. Actually, let me see, hold on. RM, he, him. So he was going to publish this or he came up with the idea and was going to work with Violet Gaze Press which I feel like I've talked about on here or at least I've seen before which is a small publishing press and so I think it was his tweet just like a general tweet that started to garner excitement and other romance authors were excited about writing a story for the anthology and uh, a lot of people said they had heard of it like readers because of his tweet. But now apparently uh, Violet Gaze Press has been shady and so now the anthology is no longer happening. So essentially he was pushed out and I'm gonna share his thread on Twitter. So RM said, I don't know how to ease into this so I'm just gonna say it. My involvement with the monster anthology is done and I will no longer have a story featured in it. I have felt for a while that I was being pushed out and when I tried to speak up, I was framed as the angry black man and guilted into silence. My influence was used to garner interest and yet I was told all I did was tweet and I was made to feel I didn't deserve credit beyond that. It's a tale as old as time. Black POC authors have their work co-opted and when they try and set a boundary they are made to feel like they're the problem or that they're being difficult. I won't stand for that. I wish all the authors the best of luck and I will still support you in any way that I can. Love and thank you all. And then there were a lot of tweets supporting RM, like this one that says, I remember RM's tweet about a monster romance anthology that garnered a ton of interest. I remember him being listed as someone to direct questions to on the submission guideline tweet. I remember him answering questions in that thread. This is fucked up. So literally they, and there are some uh, private messages between a person at Violet Gaze Press and RM that basically say like what do you you know all you did was tweet like trying to make it seem like he wasn't more involved than that when this person literally was like he was listed as the person to contact if you even wanted to be involved in the project someone else said this situation is the perfect example of how some publishers use black poc authors to garner attention for more diverse readers 
I'm seeing some energy about folks rushing to judgment about this shit with Violet Gaze Press and RM. And let me be very fucking clear. There is no rush to judgment. Some of us have been paying attention and more to the point, you don't know who knows who or what we know. Ooh, Tasha. Let me stop. And if a large part of your business plan is to scour the timeline and lift ideas, you do not have a fucking business plan. At best, you're a leech. At worst, you're doing low-key predatory shit that makes you suspect. I've watched this happen more than once. So I wonder if he probably tweeted that and maybe they messaged him to work with him is what I'm getting from this. If you just are like scanning Twitter, and you're like, oh, we like that. Let's work together. RM Virtues literally had the whole idea of doing that anthology. So there's plenty of people who, you know, bees on the Twitters that know that he came up with that idea. And then there were some authors, I don't know if I can find their tweets, who were being upset because Violet Gaze then decided not to publish the anthology at all. And so some of the authors, I feel like maybe one or two, it was the, uh, not the majority, but a few authors who were supposed to be in the Monster Anthology were then upset and kind of taking it out on RM as if it was his fault that they were gonna pull the anthology. Um, and Tasha said, I legit get authors being pissed at the situation, but what you're not gonna do is come for R when he was just standing up for himself during a moment of admitted fault on the part of Violet Gaze. Y'all wanna be mad your submission isn't getting published? Talk to Violet Gaze. Do not bring that to RM when he did nothing wrong. Do not be a passive aggressive subtweeting asshole. Pull up your adult draw draws and get and grow the fuck up. And another person adding to that they saw his tweet first before people were even talking about a monster, monster anthology was, this is the crucial part. RM's tweets got all that interest going. I saw it, I liked it, and then I saw the call for storage emerge after that. Not to be, you know, but it's worth noting who was interested when it was just RM and who wasn't interested after. Some more tweets from RM said, if y'all want me to be an asshole, I'll be an asshole. It was my idea. You wouldn't have had an anthology to be part of if it wasn't for me. They only made a move because of the interest I created with my following. For some of you to subtweet me while having me blocked, Pretending I stole food out of your mouth because I refused to be taken advantage of is real fucking rich. I was creating the opportunity. I wanted to help y'all to turn on me like I came out specifically to rob you of an opportunity is selfish and delusional at best. Like just say you're down to sacrifice a black trans author for your time in the spotlight. Violet Gaze Press did not make me. They came to me because of the success I got on my own and then tried to make it seem like they did me a favor. I've said it countless times, you want fucking receipts? Come talk to me. But I don't owe anybody a damn thing. Certainly not a bunch of people who would rather subtweet than grow the fuck up and say what they gotta say to me. A ninja they don't know with their whole chest. But all I'm saying is don't let me find out who because I got time. And I have no problem reading you for filth. Talking about I ruined your careers, but if I took away your one shot to get published, what career was there to fucking ruin? Maybe you should look at yourselves and figure out why the only way you could get published was through a predatory press who gave you a shot based on my idea. I am grateful for the support I did get, but to those who want to throw temper tantrums, temper tantrums in dark corners and curse me, either say it outright or pipe the fuck down. Yo, that got me heated. Oh my gosh. But like I said, there were people who were basically blaming him for the anthology being canceled. Like, uh, no. And so to already be a small press, you really did yourself a disservice here by acting a fool. And, um, you know, am I sorry for that? I mean, we need more small presses, but not if you're acting like that. That's not helping anybody. I mean, like, obviously you have to look out for yourself, but you need to respect the people that you're publishing as well. And so I don't have, I think Violet Gaze Press must have deleted some of their tweets because I don't see them on Twitter, but I do have a couple screenshots where they were replying to RM's thread. And one was, RM, I think this is really unfair and untrue. And we spent hours talking about this last night and how I didn't realize because there was no suggestion that you were unhappy and I messaged you every step of the way. There were she receipts showing this. And RM replied, as there are receipts showing that you tried to guilt me and literally said, what credit do you think your tweet requires beyond that? Multiple people have seen them. I did admit I should have set boundaries beforehand, but what you did yesterday was not okay. RM, other Violet Gaze Press director here, I've read through these tweets and I would like to apologize sincerely for the way this process has made you feel. You were central to getting this opportunity rolling. Twitter's not great for doing apologies or dealing with serious stuff and we and I take what you've written here extremely seriously. Our aim when setting up this company has been to help people get their stories out and support what we can. We've dropped the ball here and that's not okay. 
So I have some of the messages between RM and Violet Gaze Press and I literally can see the tweet or the message where Violet Gaze Press said, uh, what credit do you think your tweet requires beyond that? But there are other parts of the conversation. There's a lot, so I won't read them all. I thought I was helping by reading the submissions. I knew you didn't have time for anymore. We have three volumes to be able to accept as many good submissions as we could. I can very happily and easily make yours the first. And he said, regardless of which one I'm in or whether I'm not in one, I do think we need to discuss the type of credit I will be receiving on all volumes of this anthology or if I'm being cut out because that's honestly what it feels like, whether you meant to do that or not. I asked a long time ago to have submissions sent to me. You told me to wait until the deadline. I did that and haven't fought about anything this thus far and I admit I should have set the boundary long ago. The fact of the matter is that control has been gradually taken away from me and I don't want my struggles to be used to justify that when, never, when I never said I wanted out. But I felt the whole time like I've been pushed out so I just gave up because yes, I'm too busy to be fighting for my own projects. But my name was never on the submission graphic and tagging me isn't the same thing. <clears throat> mentioning me isn't the same thing. I would like explicit credit and I would like it to be in writing regardless of whether I decide to go for it with you at all. And <laughs> this is when they're like, I don't read submissions until the deadline has been set. That's not fair on authors. You came up with an idea and tweeted it. And I said, yes, let's. And we worked together on it. I didn't think it was an RM Presents thing, but that you wanted to be involved and we did work closely. When I asked you how involved you wanted to be in submissions, you said you had set time aside, to read or the person at Violet Gaze Press claimed that uh, RM had like a death in the family and that made him too busy to participate and essentially they were going back and forth um, with him expressing how he feels like he's been slowly pushed out of this project, how it started out, you know, really centering him. He wanted the submissions to be sent to him and now the deadline has approached and passed and he still hasn't heard anything and she's saying she, or this person is saying they have so much to read and they can't do it all when he was like <laughs> I was right here you've not given me anything to do like what are you don't do you not want me to be in this project is what I'm getting and another message was okay I'm not sure you realize this so I'm just gonna say it but that is guilting that is manipulative language I've been hurt all day okay so that makes my hurt and my concerns less than I should stop sticking up for myself because you're hurt <coughs> Nigel um hey. hey you got mail no so you're gonna interrupt my video and not bring mail we got internet now I, I guess i mean it never went off okay i'll be back <sighs> okay interruption sorry but so on a positive note there are a lot of people on twitter who are offering services to people who are supposed to have a story published in the anthology, which I think was called Monster Love. So like someone said, if you need a cover design for your monster love story, I'll do yours for free. Someone else offered to edit and proofread. Someone else offered editing. So there's people on Twitter who are offering up services to people who would have normally had those things done through Violet Gaze Press so that they can still, if they want to publish their stories individually, I'm assuming. And so lastly, I went to Violet Gaze Press's Twitter. They have their pinned comment that says, apology to our virtues and cancellation of the Monster Love anthologies. At Violet Gaze Press, we believe in owning our mistakes. And over the past month or so, we've made a lot of them in respect of the way that we've handled the Monster Love anthologies, an idea which came from RM. And in the way we have treated and communicated with RM, that's on us. A lot of these apologies go into a list of buts, but there's no buts here. RM has set out the reasons he feels unable to work with Violet Gaze Press going forward in a tweet and I'm going to add if I can at the end of this tweet so you can see his actual words and not a paraphrase that makes us look better. RM is a great writer and a great part of the writing community and a strong and brave advocate for the things he believes. He deserves respect and deserves to be acknowledged for all the work he put into this project. Our failure is something we cannot make better and we respect RM's position on this. Therefore, the central point of this tweet is a heartfelt apology to RM for appropriating his idea and then denying him agency in developing it. And a promise that we will take to heart what he has said in his tweet of earlier today when putting out stories which our privilege allows us to do. There is financial fairness, which we have always tried to adopt, and then there is the core element, respect, which we are going to work to make happen so that Violet Gaze Press can be a safe place for everyone to publish the works they love and the stories they want to tell without feeling the way we made RM feel. We will be contacting the authors who were accepted for the anthologies directly to apologize for our failings in this matter and to help, help any who want our help to find a new home for their wonderful stories or help them with self-publishing through editing, formatting, etc. 
We need to be better. We are going to be better going forward. We know words are worthless. It's time to focus on the actions to make publishing a better place, which we failed to do on this project and hurt a great author. I'm going to try and link RM's original tweet as a reply to this, and I cannot get it to work on this tweet thread. So, <sighs> like they said themselves, words are worthless. So hopefully there won't be any instances like this in the future, but it's just so upsetting to RM and to the other authors that they... I don't know couldn't look past themselves um and see how they were handling a situation in the wrong way and not really understand and like see rm's hurt and how they were treating him when this was basically his baby his project and so they did a disservice to rm to the other authors and to themselves but it looks like you know of course the indie romance community especially as so supportive that they're all you know uh i was gonna say bounding <laughs> that they're banding together to help other people if they want to publish their stories so that at the end of the day is a positive thing but it's just really sad to see something like this still happening and <sighs> it's a mess but good on rm for standing up for himself and not let himself continuously be taken advantage advantage of and then the in the anthology come out and they don't credit him or not even put his story in all of that so I'm glad that he stuck up for himself when he did. And I hope, we can only hope that Violet Gaze Press does take this as a serious moment, a learning opportunity and does not repeat this in the future. We can only hope. And not to add, not to make the theme of this video, why y'all doing this to black people, but I mean, it's kind of a fact of life, but I was just scrolling through my bookmarks and I had this uh, tweet bookmarked from Rachel Housel Hall, who is a newer black thriller writer. And uh, I just wanted to touch on it for a moment. So the tweet says, so, so when a writer of color says my sales are low sometimes simply because I'm black or an editor looks at their writer's numbers and wonders why a book hasn't soared as well as planned, let's consider emails like this one I received yesterday. Talk about toxic things. So the email literally says, your novels sound great, great, but I have a feeling there is a degree of affirmative action and or wokeness, so I will pass. I just am always flabbergasted at what people take the time to type out and send to people. And there have been examples on Twitter or on these video in these videos before where people, mainly black authors and especially black women, get emails like this. Like, I would read your book or like your book was good, but it could have been great if there were less black people. Like <sighs> It's already bad enough you have those views, but like at least keep them to yourself and not send them to people. But it just goes, it's just the truth of what they have to go through and um, how unfair the playing field still is. And I hate it. So I just wanted to share that. I don't have any other like wisdom or any anything else to say except I hate it. And those people are the worst honestly. So this next story is a wild. So someone had messaged me on Instagram maybe a week ago and asked me if I knew why this certain romance author was like supposed to be at this event or something and then the agency like announced it and then like a week later or something maybe a couple weeks later they were like we are sorry that we're gonna have to cancel like we you know in light of what has happened we're not going to be doing or working with this author anymore. And they're like, do you know what happened? And I was like, no, like I literally never heard of this author, hadn't heard of the thing, but I was looking on Twitter, kind of just typing in her name. I didn't really find a lot. But then, shout out to Izzy again, happy for now, had a tweet. And so as I was tweeting about, or I Googled her name, and then I saw a mention of something and I remembered a tweet I saw from Izzy. And so I went back and I found the tweet and it was a link to this post on another author's website. And it was about the author that this person had messaged me about. So I'm going to screen, screen record because this will just be a lot easier because she wrote a post and it is 
a lot. I'm probably not gonna be able to share the whole thing, but I will link it down below. So the, the author's website is AK Evans. Again, another author I haven't heard of, but I'm not that deep in Romance Landia. And the person in this story is, their pen name is Dr. Rebecca Sharp. So the story is titled Decay, A True Life Stalker Story. Yikes. So it starts, when I decided to become a writer, I always thought my toughest challenge would be writing blurbs. Boy, was I wrong. Because not only do I now love writing book blurbs, but the bigger challenge I faced for the better part of nearly five years is something that not a lot of people know about. For many years now, I've attempted to do the right thing and be the bigger person in a situation that I've been dealing with in my personal and professional life. Some of you have figured it out on your own and have come to me with your concerns. Some of you know nothing about it. I didn't think I would ever tell this story because what comes with telling this story and including all the facts associated with it is a bunch of drama. From the very beginning of my publishing career, I've made a valiant effort to keep my website, my social media, and my newsletter as professional as possible. I've always tried to keep it all about the books. It is only on rare occasion that I share stories or pictures that pertain to my personal life and my family. Your damn Birkenstock. Just say you want my Birkies and go, okay? Do you see my water over there? I'm so thirsty. Thank you. I got a new pack of masks also. They're in your car, in the beaver. Okay. Bye. You are so thirsty. You're thirsty. Like I'm actually thirsty for a water. You thirsty for attention. <laughs> Bye. There's a reason for that. And I hope by the end of this, you'll understand better why I've stuck to simply posting book related news. But I'm here now ready to tell this story because at this point, I feel like I've been backed up against a wall. This is no longer fair to my readers and I believe they deserve to know the truth. There's another author in the romance community that has been actively stalking and copying me. Her pen name is Dr. Rebecca Sharp. Now, if you've heard of her, know her or read her books, I can guess what you're probably thinking. There's no way she's so sweet. Yes, we all portray ourselves online in the best light, don't we? The point of me doing this is to show you all the proof and evidence of what is being done and to allow you to make your own judgments about it. In the interest of full disclosure, before I get into all of this, I just need to blow your mind one more time. Are you ready? I'm sure you're not prepared for this, but here goes. She's my sister-in-law. Bitch! 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 I wasn't ready for that. I was not prepared. Woo! So she follows, this is quite long, but there are screenshots that you'll see on the screen um, of comparisons where it starts out maybe more innocently, like similar photos on Instagram, similar captions or phrases, and then it escalates. So again, I'm not gonna read the entire thing, but I will try to highlight the images and then what she says and how this escalates over years because she does say this is years worth of her behavior she has a lot to show you and some of it may start off small but it's to build on the bigger picture yikes let's go so she does mention i am wrong for not saying something sooner there was a part of me that thought i'll let it work itself out readers especially romance readers are smart they'll figure it out on their own and many of them have but that's not fair they shouldn't have to spend their time and money on something only to learn that they've read a book that's eerily similar so i want to start this by saying that i'm sorry i'm sorry to my readers or any reader for that matter who have purchased my books and her books only to realize there were far too many things that were similar to be a coincidence i hope you'll accept my apology i'm truly sorry for not speaking up about this sooner Please note that I'm sharing only a tiny fraction of the screenshots, messages, blurbs, etc. that I have. This is years worth of her behavior. I have tons of stuff that shows what I've been dealing with and you're only seeing a very small sample. But I think it's more than enough for readers to see and make up their minds about what is actually happening. So she starts at the beginning with the stalker copycat behavior. It was simple, just on social media. So we got a post that is a like a picture of a Word document and then also hers was a picture of a Word document open. And then it goes to these beauties just arrived today. These beauties arrived today, like their post. You're, you're most likely seeing this on the screen. Looking for a new book boyfriend? How about an alpha male with a sweet side? Check out Zane Cunningham in my new release, Everything I Have. Looking for a new book boyfriend? How about sexy alpha artist Tristan Black, world famous for his skills in bed and on canvas? 
This doesn't seem like a big deal. They are all simple posts on social media and really don't matter, but it's important to this whole thing because it shows a pattern of behavior. And so she went as far as contacting readers on Goodreads to try to get them to read her book. So this is something that she sent to a reader on Goodreads that Rebecca sent. My name is Rebecca Sharp and I'm a relatively new indie author. I hope I'm not being too forward, but I came across some of your reviews lately supporting my sister-in-law, AK Evans, and just loved how thoughtful they were. So I wanted to reach out to you and see if you might want to check out my original debut series of standalone contemporary romance novels, The Gentleman's Guild series. The first book, The Artist's Touch, is available now and book number two, The Sculptor's Seduction, is set to be released next week. I would love to hear your thoughts if they sound like something you would be interested in. Thanks so much. I hope you have a wonderful weekend, Rebecca. And AK Evans says, I just want to make it absolutely clear that we were not on good speaking terms at this point, but she still managed to contact a reader and use my name to gain some of her own. I've learned very recently that this is not the only time she's done this with readers on Goodreads. So then in 2017, AK Evans published her debut series, which was a sports romance with and the sport was snowboarding. And the first book was released in April 2017. And then Rebecca released a snowboarding sports romance in December 2017. She said, I get it. Anyone can write a romance about snowboarders, but you'd expect the author would come up with their own content and not steal. Well, here's something I received from one of my ARC readers who happened to call her out on Goodreads regarding her country love series. I'll get to that in a minute. There was a private exchange between the two of them on Goodreads and where Rebecca tried to claim that the ideas for her country love series were all original inspired by country songs. My reader happened to fire back with this. And so there's a long uh, message from the reviewer, like they have the similarities of the stories, like Munro is one of the heroines in the Everything series, not such a common name, and you use it you use the name as Chance's PT. Big Lou's is the name of the saloon and restaurant in the Everything series. You use Big Louie's way too close. Like it just goes through all of these things that are very similar that she took from AK's book and put into her own and, and barely changed it. And so AK says in the message with the reader, you can see a list of things that were far too similar between our books to be coincidental. And then we keep going with some more images. In the comparison images below, you can see where she either copied direct words or the plots are the same. The red outline show the similarity in the plot. So we have a book called Everything I Need by A.K. Evans. Charlie Meadows has lost nearly everything she loves. Needing to calm her mind and get away from the heartache, Charlie abandons the place she always called home. On the Edge by Rebecca Sharp. And these were released, um, Rebecca's was released one year after A.K.'s. Fleeing an unimaginable tragedy, Allie Ryder gave up sun and sand for the cold snowy mountains of Colorado. She wasn't looking to start over. She was looking to bury her broken and something is marked out. And then it says, the purple shows where either direct words were copied or slightly altered to convey the same idea. In Everything I Need versus On the Edge, the heroine has experienced tragedy and moves away from home to a new location where she meets the hero. In the Everything I Have versus Over the Top comparison, we have two stories about heroines who suffered abuse at the hands of their ex-partners. And so there's more comparisons here. And it's always A.K. Evans's book that comes out first. And then Rebecca's, books, Re Rebecca's book comes out next. So now while we are on the subject of the snowboarding series, let's talk about some of the content inside two of the books, In Too Deep and Over the Top. So <clears throat> in In Too Deep, she has two passages highlighted and says mention of Cunning Haven, which was Cunning Ham before a reader said something to her about it. I've made a note on the image above, but essentially Rebecca needed a name for a substandard private investigation firm and she chose Cunningham. Coincidence that my security series is titled Cunningham. For reference, Rebecca Sharp's In Too Deep was re released in February 2019, February 2019, 14 months after I released the first book in that series. Then there's more screenshots with comparisons between the two with names and says, you'll see a few names highlighted in these images, Andrea Jensen, Jeff, and Evan. Andrea Jensen is the villain in the book, and what's interesting about that is that my name is Andrea and my youngest son is Jensen. You can use my name all you want, but when you take my kid's name, I have a serious problem with that. Furthermore, whether she likes it or not, my son is still technically her husband's nephew, even if we're not on speaking terms. I'm sorry, but that's just crossing a line. You don't cross. Jeff is my husband's name. And Evan, well, derived from my last name, maybe? I'm just surprised she doesn't use my oldest son's name in the book to make it a family affair. 
So there's just more. Um, another screenshot of a reader who noticed similarities between the snowboarding romance books. She shares more blurbs where the books, of course hers came out first, and then Rebecca's came out, have similar blurbs or they're like similar plots. multiple similarities in a lot of their books. She was talking about receiving a notification on Facebook that a person named Meg Dane wanted to join her private reader group that's called AK's Book Babes. At the time, I accepted the request and didn't think twice about it. It wasn't until a little more than two months later when something tipped me off and I immediately knew Rebecca was in my group under another name. When I figured it out, I reached out to a family member to get out my frustrations about the complete and utter lack of respect that Rebecca has for me and my privacy and the link she'll go to to constantly be in my space. Space she knew she would not be welcome in if she'd attempted to make that request as herself. So she has a screenshot that shows still on June 11th and Meg Dane was still an actor member of the group. By 6.02 p.m. that same day, hours after she'd been confronted, Meg shows up as unavailable, indicating that the account was deleted or that I'd been blocked from seeing it. And she said, now I probably, uh, now, now I know you're probably thinking, none of this indicates that Meg Dane is actually Rebecca Sharp. Well, what if I told you that Meg Dane signed up for my newsletter with her fake email address? You probably still think that doesn't tell me it's Rebecca, and maybe you'd be right. But what you might not know is the company I use for my newsletter records the IP address and latitude longitude coordinates for anyone who signs up for my newsletter. Normally this information is meaningless to me. I never even go look at it. But in this case, it was just what I needed to prove to myself that I wasn't crazy. And I know you're probably asking the question, if the IP address and latitude longitude coordinates prove that Rebecca Sharp is the one who did this, why are you covering them up with that red banner, Andrea? What do you have to hide? And the answer, I don't have anything to hide, but Rebecca does. You see, Dr. Rebecca Sharp is a pen name, and you can easily see from her biography that Lucy resembles mine. Don't worry, I have pictures of that too, along with the ones that show her logo now suddenly looks similar to mine. She's a dentist. If I share the information underneath that red banner, anybody who reads this will be able to plug those coordinates into Google and drop a pen right on top of the dental office her grandfather opened back in the 50s. It's the same dental office that has an apartment upstairs that she lives in. Rebecca's real identity is exposed if I share that information and the bottom line is for some ridiculous reason I cannot begin to understand. I actually have a shred of decency in this situation. I will respect someone else's right to privacy even if that person is undeserving and has invaded my privacy on multiple occasions. Rebecca will have you believing that I'm some evil villain and she's the victim but I'm not actually an evil person so I'll keep that IP, IP address and latitude longitude coordinates private for now. But if Rebecca wants to claim that I'm making this up and it's not her, she's certain ugh. she is certainly welcome to ask me to prove it. I'm more than prepared, but I guarantee you she won't because she knows that it's just not her pen name that's at stake at that point. Exposing her real identity exposes the dental practice and exposing that, well, let's just say that this short story I'm sharing is not the first time her family has made headlines. <gasps> Whoa! And finally, in the images below, you'll see a few screenshots of that same IP address visiting my website. I've included three, which show visits in January, February, and March of 2019. I have hundreds of these, nearly every day, multiple visits per day. It's almost scary. Oof. So there you have it, my real life soccer story. If you're wondering why I finally decided to share this, I made mention of it above, but I'll share it again. I did this for my readers. If this had only been affecting me, I would have sucked it up and kept doing my thing. But the amount of readers contacting me that are being affected by this is unacceptable. Let me clarify. I'm okay with the readers contacting me to share what they've seen. What's not okay is them feeling like they've been cheated. 
Could I call the police and start talking about stalking and harassment? Could I hire an attorney and take this to court? Yes, I probably could. But I really don't want to have to do that. And the bottom line is, I'm not after her money. I don't need to take her to court to sue her and get money out of her. That's not what this is about for me at all. What do I want? I want this to stop. That's all I've wanted from the very beginning. Okay, sorry, uh, change in, I'm on my phone, I'm on the floor, but my camera battery died and it's raining outside. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video. Wu Chile, any link that I have to an article or anything will be linked down below per usual, but uh, can people stop being trifling? Like it just, it to me, it seems like a simple thing, but apparently it's not that easy. But anyway, to end this on a happy note, LeVar Burton, who is amazing, who obviously was the host of Reading Rainbow. He was also on Star Trek and now he has a podcast. Uh, so Reading Rainbow made its debut in 1983 and it ran for 26 years, which I did not realize and I would like it on a streaming service so I can watch all of them and see what books he recommended, okay? But it is being celebrated in a new documentary called Butterfly in the Sky. So it's currently in production and it's set to chronicle the journey of the educational children's television program and aims to honor the show's legacy and teach younger generations about this milestone in television history in our current era of distance learning. So the film will feature archival footage and interviews with Reading Rainbow host LeVar Burton, along with the major broadcasters, educators, and filmmakers involved in the show that encourage a love of books and reading among children. I, I could cry. I feel like my mom always had books in my house but we used to watch Reading Rainbow at school. I don't know, that just makes me so happy because LeVar Burton genuinely seems like such an incredible man and he inspired so many children to read and this like makes me wanna cry. Um, so I'm so excited to see this. Um, I don't know when or what platform it will be on, whichever way I have to get my little grubby little paws on it because I have to watch it and celebrate LeVar Burton, but I just wanted to end on that positive note because I'm so happy. So before we get out of here, we have to shout out to my wonderful patrons. I would like to say a big thank you to Bebe's besties, Danielle, Katie, Bobby, Jen, Kristen, Leo, Kate, Terry, Emily, Jesse, Janine, Sarah, Pepper, Shannon, Kirsten, Elizabetta, Amber, Heidi, Maria, and Serena. And to the Nigel Lavandria stands, Maya, Rosie, Ava, Claire, Carrie, Tyrell, Demery, Rainey, and Celine. And of course, a big thank you to Bebe's admirers and friends of Bebe. Thank you so much for all of your support. If you'd like to join my Patreon, it is linked down below. But anywho, thank you for, if you've watched this entire video, please give it a thumbs up. Think about subscribing. You hit that notification bell so you're always notified when I post a video. And thank you to Boksu for sponsoring today's video. If you click the link and enter my code Jess010, so Jess010, you could save 10% on your new subscription with Boksu and it's worth it. I will hope you all stay blessed, hydrated, moisturized, and sunscreened. Um, and that's gonna be it for me. So I'll see you in my next one. Bye! Butterfly in the sky, I can go twice as high. Take a look, it's in a book, reading rainbow. Okay. <laughs>